Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today on Beast Coast Pokemon, we're trying a new type of video where we dive into the history of competitive Pokemon. As you may know, VGC has been the official format for live Pokemon tournaments for over a decade now. While each format has its ups and downs, there's one format in particular that many players, including myself, consider to be the worst VGC format ever, and that's VGC 2016. In this video, we'll break down a couple of reasons for why so many players dislike 2016. And if this is content that you enjoy, it'd really mean a lot if you could leave a like, Give us any feedback down in the comment section below and subscribe to the channel for more content in the future. Hey guys, Cyber. <laughs> Relax! I was just gonna get there. Anyway, as this little buddy was saying, 80% of you aren't subscribed to the channel, so hit that subscribe button. It really helps. Hey, what Pokemon are you? As a quick reminder before we get started, the 2016 rule set used double battles and allowed up to two restricted Pokemon, including Primal Groudon and Kyogre, Mega Rayquaza, and multiple other restricteds like Xerneas. The format was played in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, and it was the second format in VGC history that allowed for restricted Pokemon, with the first one being 2010. Now that we've set the stage, let's get started. Reason number one? Smeargle. Smeargle was one of the most prominent Pokemon in 2016 as it was an incredible support option, and it was especially threatening because it was the only legal Pokemon that got access to Dark Void. The only other Pokemon that gets access to Dark Void is Darkrai, which is always banned in VGC formats because it's considered a mythical Pokemon. Back in Gen 6, Dark Void had 80% accuracy and put all adjacent foes to sleep. This meant that when you used it against two Pokemon, you had a 64% chance of putting both of them to sleep, a 32% chance of putting one of the two to sleep, and only a 4% chance to miss both Pokemon. Sleep is a really powerful status condition as you may know, and in restricted formats it's even stronger, where a single turn can allow for a powerful Pokemon like Xerneas, Mega Rayquaza, or Mega Kangaskhan to get multiple stat boosts safely. Back then, most Smeargle would use either Focus Sash or Choice Scarf, but it would be really difficult for players to cover for both options immediately, making it harder to fight against. The Focus Sash variant would allow Smeargle to take multiple hits, forcing players to double up into it to deny a Dark Void, while Choice Scarf allowed Smeargle to move before most Pokemon and put them to sleep before they can get an attack off. In addition, Smeargle got access to every move in the game, and it could run a wide variety of attacks. The most common set had moves such as Fake Out, Follow Me, Wide Guard, and Spiky Shield, but you'd also see moves like Crafty Shield to block opposing Dark Voids and Transform. Transform in particular was a really threatening option, as it could allow players to transform their own Smeargle into a restricted Pokemon, such as their own Xerneas after a Geomancy boost. One boosted Xerneas was already difficult enough to deal with, now imagine dealing with two. Another point to highlight here is Smeargle's ability, Moody. Moody raises a random stat by two stages, and lowers another stat by one stage at the end of each turn. This gave Smeargle the chance to get boosts in speed, accuracy, and evasion, all which drastically helped out its ability to use Dark Void. It added a significant layer of variance to each game, and unsurprisingly, Moody was nerfed in subsequent generations and no longer affects accuracy or evasion in Gen 8. Overall, as you can probably tell, Smeargle was a huge problem in the format. If you ignored it, you risked it putting your entire team to sleep with Dark Void, but if you focused too heavily on it and ignored its partner, you risked taking too much damage or letting a strong Pokemon set up in front of you, like Xerneas. Dark Void was such an impressive option. It's no surprise that this move was also nerfed in subsequent generations, the accuracy was lowered to 50%, and Smeargle now no longer gets access to it. Smeargle was also a core member of the Big Six team, which was one of the most popular teams in the format and in BGC history. Reason number two? Big Six. Big Six was a term that basically described a team that consisted of Mega Kangaskhan, Mega Salamence, Smeargle, Groudon, Xerneas, and Talonflame. It was first popularized by Yosuke Isagi, the 2014 Japanese national champion and a semi-finalist at the 2015 World Championships. He first used it in an early show match in January between Japanese and German players, so basically at the very beginning of the format. Big Six was an incredibly powerful team that focused on protecting Xerneas to allow it to sweep through teams after a Geomancy. Smeargle was an excellent partner, for all the reasons we listed previously. Mega Kangaskhan was also a valuable partner, especially as a lead duo, as it could get a fast fake out off and would pressure with immense damage damage output in subsequent turns. In addition, back then, Mega Kangaskhan got access to Power Up Punch, so not only did you have to worry about Xerneas boosting its stats quickly, you also had to worry about Kangaskhan boosting its stats quickly. One thing that you would actually also occasionally see is some players would try to protect to block a fake out on the first turn, and Mega Kangaskhan could actually use Power Up Punch on its own partner to instantly get a boost and really punish players who would use Protect immediately. Primal Groudon on the team covered for Xerneas' Steel type weakness, while Talonflame and Mega Salamence offered potential speed control through Tailwind. The team exerted so much pressure, especially on the first turn of the game, and it often felt like if you didn't play the first turn correctly, you'd fall into a major deficit immediately. Dark Void on Smeargle also added a lot more variance, and having to guess which item it was carrying didn't make things any easier. This team won multiple regional championships across the US 
US and Europe, and was pretty much always seen in the top eight of a major tournament. Multiple images of tournament placings from that year actually went viral with fans criticizing the lack of diversity within top placements and the number of players who would use Big Six or a variant of it. Now, it's important to note that these were probably the worst case examples, and so there were multiple majors where Big Six wasn't nearly as dominant, but fans and viewers criticized the lack of diversity in the format. This leads me to reason number three, which is general centralization. In 2016, there were four restricted Pokemon that were so much stronger than all the other options. Mega Rayquaza, had the unique fact that it was a mega evolution that could also hold an item. Primal Kyogre and Groudon had incredible abilities, base stats, and a very powerful signature attack. Xerneas had access to Geomancy, allowing to boost its stats rapidly. These four Pokemon dominated the format from the beginning to the end. It was quite rare for top teams to not run a combination of the four. For example, at US Nationals, 11 of the top 12 teams had a combo of the four. At UK Nationals, all of the top eight teams had a combo of the four. And at Worlds, all of the top eight teams had a combo of the four. Compare this to the current VGC format, VGC 2022 Series 12. While certain Pokemon in the current format like Zacian, Kyogre, and Groudon are very popular picks, we've actually seen a very diverse mix of restricted duels crack the top 8 of major tournaments. For example, at the European International Championships, the largest tournament of the year so far, 7 unique restricted duels and 8 unique restricted Pokemon cracked the top 8. The fact that it was so difficult to build a consistent team back then around any restricted Pokemon that was not named Rayquaza, Kyogre, Groudon, or Xerneas certainly turned away casual players and viewers away from the format. That's not to say that you needed to run a combo of the 4 in order to win. For example, Evil Tall didn't see much usage in 2016, but some players performed exceptionally well with it. For example, 2013 world champion Arash Omadi won Germany Nationals with Evil Tall and Groudon, while several other players finished in the top 8 of Italy Nationals with the same duo. Finally, getting down to our last couple of reasons, reason number 4 is tournament structure. Today, all Pokemon majors use the best of 3 format, but back in 2016, regional championships used the best of 1 format during the first stage, or the Swiss rounds. This meant that you had very little room for error, and you could only really afford one loss out of the eight rounds if you wanted to move on to the next stage of the tournament, which is called top cut, and that's often the final eight or final 16 of a tournament. You combine that with a highly volatile format, and that made things significantly more difficult and really less exciting to play in. Speaking of volatility, that really leads us to our final point, which is reason number five, reliance on low accuracy moves. A lot of the most popular Pokemon back in 2016 used moves that were not 100% accurate. We've talked about a lot up until now, but for example, Primal Kyogre and Groudon used Origin Pulse and Precipice Blades respectively, which is 85% accurate. Smeargle used Dark Void, which is 60% accurate. And Bronzong, which is a very popular support Pokemon, often carried Hypnosis. VGC 2016 had a lot of issues with it. That's not to say that it was all bad. The format really rewarded smart team builders, and that was really exemplified at the World Championships, where we saw lots of unique strategies and moves. Big Six, which many Japanese players considered to be the top team even going into the World Championships, actually heavily underperformed at Worlds, as players figured out solutions for it. A lot of Japanese players used Big Six at Worlds, and that ended up being Japan's worst year at the World Championships ever, with no Japanese player finishing in the top 16 in the Masters division. In general, though, the prevalence of Big Six especially in the beginning of the mid-season, Smeargle in particular, four ultra-strong restricted Pokemon in Kyogre, Groudon, Rayquaza, Xerneas, and a high variance, best of one tournament structure for a lot of the lower level tournaments made the format an absolute nightmare to play. For those reasons, I consider 2016 to be the worst VGC format ever, but obviously at the end of the day, this is just my opinion. Let us know what format you think is the worst down in the comment section below, and thanks so much for watching. If you want to see more content like this in the future, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. We're really excited to continue to build out Beast Coast Pokemon, and we're glad to have you as a viewer. Thanks so much, and see you soon.